What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So, let's go take down this baddie of a boss. Um, I'm gonna try out some of the fire salts, see what those do exactly. And I put Holy Ward on, but actually, let me, uh... Well, let's do fire salts this one, and then we'll try the burn salts on the, the next attempt, because I'm kind of curious on the difference of them. God, I hate that it's like... When I summon in, it pulls me all the way, so then I need to run back over here and pick that up. Alright, lady, let's see what you got. Oh, nope, that was not well-timed on my part. I just want to see exactly how many attacks I could get two-handed after baiting out her whole combo. Oh, caught in the chest mid-heel. I didn't even test what I wanted to. Okay, so anytime she plunges, she's gonna get a little bit of damage. The holy buildup doesn't look particularly bad. So I probably don't need to worry too much about, uh... Don't need to worry a lot about the holy resist. Honestly, it's just it's throwing me off so much that my my two-handing stance just really isn't that good. I was like, especially playing like, oh, this is strength berserker man. Great. Okay. It's a play style I'm very familiar with. And then having to not two-hand the weapon, it's like I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a mental roadblock in my brain that's like two-hand it. Two-hand it now. Two-hand it. Like the logic part of my brain is like, no, bro, don't. Two handing does not work well. Alright, that was a little whack. How long does this fire last for? Actually, I should be practicing parries here, to be honest. She gets back her full poise bar when she transitions. The fire finally ran out. I'm out of heals. You know what I haven't noticed? Maybe I'm doing more poise damage while two-handing it. Nope. Ah, that was an interesting. Didn't even look like she was gonna swing. She also seems a lot more damage resistant in this phase. Ah, 
Oh man, again! That blast. Every time that blast. Alright, so that was a solid attempt. We got her down to the W in a renewal. And just because my brain won't listen to me, we're gonna try two handing again. Or better yet, I'm not listening to my brain. So I feel like maybe I was getting more poise damage while two handing, which that that could be the thing. That's why you're much faster attacking one handing. Getting more poise damage opens them up to a critical. Because I almost had her. And then in phase two, I think I was, what, about halfway to getting a stagger? So that took off a pretty sizable chunk. Let me get another two attacks in here and I'll see what we hit after her little combo. Actually, I think her poise is very gradually going back, so this is good. Oh. Nope, I'm dead. No, I'm not. until she pulls the sword down. Try getting charged heavy in here. is honestly like a great first boss because it's not particularly hard and it's really good for me to kind of just practice certain mechanics here. Like I should practice getting off parries as well. Okay, so charge two-handed heavy did a buttload of poise. I'm dead here, but that was her her meter went from like God, 60% poise to Oh no. I thought she was doing the other thing. Yeah, she had like I don't know, 60 or 70% of her meter and it dropped all the way down to 20% left there, I think. I think that's because it ended up being a charged heavy from behind, so would a one-handed charged heavy from behind work just as well? No, let me do let me do one full attempt with two-handing and see what the poise damage is looking like. So I need to have a good baseline comparison. I don't have that yet, and at least mechanically it seems like this boss is gonna be the best one to to test stuff out on. Some good hitbox porn here. Yeah, now, so two-handed 
It looks like if I want to focus on just parries and then counterattacks, two-handed is going to put out some serious damage. But if I'm focused more on hitting and dodging... Yeah, that's insane, dude. See, this is why I gotta ignore what my brain says and trust my heart. I thought you were going to try and grab me or something. Unless she has a phase two, then I'm then I'm probably gonna be in trouble. No, no phase two. No, nope. yes, phase two? What is happening here? Why does the, the blood look like it's running at like 10 FPS? Everything else in the world looks fine. I think it's just animated like that. doesn't seem like a phase two. This seems like a we decursed her or something. Heresy purged. Got a vestige seed for that and a bunch of some kind of goodies. Oh no, this is like a memory. Her memory of something. Mm, let's go down first. getting like ki kind of getting central hub vibes from this place welcome dark crusader i'm i'm actually i'm the i'm a werewolf Skyrest Bridge. Yeah, this is definitely, uh, definitely Central Hub. Or 
Probably. I don't know. But there's an NPC that'll show up in there. It's gonna be an NPC that'll show up in there. Yeah, it is definitely a hub. Two NPCs already, yeah. Okay, let's upgrade um, strength. Hit 14. Oh, whoa, hang on. 19. Big boost. And then look at the. Why am I seeing such an insanely steep drop off already? The next point. No, that's that's still good. That's a plus 20 plus. No, okay. It's going up to plus 16 and then plus 17. Uh, okay. I've been reading it wrong. I was like, I'm getting 16. I'm getting another 16. Okay. Well, let's put it to 20 for now. And then uh, get you to 15 for now. And then we're going to just focus on vitality for a bit. Lots of people. We're going to talk to all of them. I just want to see what this place has in store for me. Another NPC. Happy feet. This looks like where I probably proceed that way. That looks like progression. I still can't get over how fast my dude runs. It's, it, I don't know, man. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, go, go. I was track and field all through college. <laughs> like we're just we're, we're just zipping around. Uh, this is where Necromancer friend will be. What is it? You see something? What is it, boy? What's over here? Oh, who are you? Alright, so I definitely come back here. That's something. Something with the Umbral Realm goes down here. Alright, let's talk to you first. I had no doubt in my assessment of you. As one worthy of the monumental task which lies before us, Crusader. My name is Dunmire, and I am an exactor of the Dark Crusaders, the holy order of which you are now an honored member. The Church of Orion Radiance has assigned to me the duty of purging Mornstead of its Rogar blight, and ensuring the ancient tyrant Adir feels no liberation from his enduring imprisonment. While the schism between the Church and Judge Cleric is of long standing, she and her hallowed sentinels, now perverted, did at least construct Mornstead's radiant beacons, which have prevented Adir's return for centuries. But now, they stand corrupted and on the verge of collapse. It is to these five beacons you must turn your eye. Use the Umbral Lamp to cleanse them of Adir's destructive influence and deliver salvation to a world on the brink of perdition. Rogar and Hallowed Sentinel alike will offer you no quarter. So remember, though Aureus' mercy is without limit, yours should not be. What do you got for sale? Dagger, Perjure Axe. So this is all, um, all Faith Guy stuff. To strive in darkness, in love. What about you? They look like rogue stuff. By Aureus's divine will, I live again. It's a miracle. Wait, are you the lady I just fought? And to think I raised my sword. Yeah, it is. When all along you were a divine instrument sent by him to deliver my death and rebirth and bring clarity. Forgive me, Lampbearer. I'm Pieta of the Hallowed Sentinels. And as Aureus sustains me. So too will I sustain you. I could use some sustenance. Whether by making manifest your potential or through my healing blood, contained within the sanguinarics you carry. 
Should you find any saintly quintessences, bring them to me, and they can bolster the power of my blood further still. The beacons must be cleansed, the hallowed sentinels restored, and Adir's malignancy eradicated. Through whatever is to come, fellow chosen of Aureus, I like that they talk we fast. stand together in service of him. Can respect from her. That's Our nice. Continues, Four charges and twenty percent more recovery. Nice. I like that. That's May that's straightforward. You know. You. Souls. It was always like, oh, well, this isn't going to increase your count. This is going to increase how many heals you can get. Our holy work it's just Let here's Aureus here's one. Use this one. You're going to get stuff out of it. You'll be fine. So the exactors found himself a new instrument, as exactors are wont to do. And given that lamp was intended for me, should his paladin fall, and yet now here you are. Oh, you sound like a bitch. Error. Well, it seems I was right to doubt the value of a dark crusader's word. I'm Stoneman, captain of the Fidelis. A group of good men and women who've made a stand against the madness which has possessed the rest of the hallowed sentinels. We made a vow to restore our order to its former glory, whatever the cost to ourselves. And by Judge Cleric's grace, we'll honor that vow. That heretical umbral lamp, as are you, it would seem. So I just want to see what you're selling, bro. Hallowed Knight, Short Sword. C, E, D, certain doors and pilgrims perch, 9,500, increased fatality and, ooh, I want that for sure. Uh, we're definitely going to pick up the ring of duty from him. Uh, I need 3,000. I'll sell this. Rusty Cutter. Can be traded with Moldu. That's the guy up above, I think. Main socket effect, extra soul flay charge, 50% dread resistance, secondary, 25% healing on umbral, heals over time. Um, probably not going to use these at all. We'll sell those guys. Sell that. Gets me where I need to be. Radiance, judgment. Our immaculate lady will bring redemption. Um, I can I see? See my twist. Whether fifteen and twelve. There's one to each. Yeah, that's two two levels worth on a ring. That's huge. That's big. Definitely big. Oh, this is where I came in from. Look at you, a dark crusader, a lamp bearer, and a revenant to boot. Aren't you the multifaceted one? We tend to stay dead when we die, and Aureus knows enough of us have done just that. Anyway, like Nathaniel says, you keep looking back, you don't see the blade coming at your front. We set ourselves a task, and we have to finish it. Best watch a step out there. Mornstead is a land awash in blood. Best watch a step out there. Mornstead is a land awash in blood. Open he had some merchant stuff. That lamp you've got there is but then. Seems it's getting hard. Ah, oh, strange times. And I hope for both our sakes you know the difference. But if in doubt, much as he might think otherwise. But if in doubt. Right, so these are non important NPCs. This is not the entrance, I don't think. It's like a, a back room. Something. 
It's like the cap to the barracks, I think, where he just keeps all of his dudes. Let's talk to this guy. That way was progression. Ah, that's it, isn't it? Oh, the lamp of immortality. And the genuine article. Not a useless empty vessel like the one I saw that witless fool bumbling around with. I've learned a little since coming to Mornstead about that lamp and the awful mission to which it's attached. I hope you recognize that frightful burden for what it is. In truth, what's been done to you is downright cruel. Of course, some people are born into roles of tremendous responsibility. My name is Andreas of Ebb, esteemed scion of nobility. But far more than that, descendant of the great ruler Antanas himself, as proven by my family's book of lineage, for one. That's right. Through my veins flows the blood of the legendary hero who defied Adir and the Rogar and saved the whole world, only to be betrayed and murdered by a common criminal. So you'll understand a man of my pedigree cannot simply stand idle while an unfortunate victim such as yourself remains shackled to such a grim fate. Give me the lamp, hmm? No? It saddens me to- I hope you see sense. My offer stands, after all. My offer stands. He just wants my, my lamp. He's probably gonna get in trouble and I gotta save him and then he's gonna try and betray me and take the lamp at some point. Uh, what else is here? This is like some weird workshop. So, cleric dude, mercenary dude, heal lady. And can I... I want to go up there, but I need to be umbral to get up here. What was down this way? Was there anybody? No, it's just like the war table. Not even a war table, it's like a desk. Fucked eyeballs. any plucked eyeballs. It's interesting. The lamp must be born until the favored child makes themselves known. Only then can the remaining carrion of creation finally return to the void. Uh, I only have a primary socket, but yeah, there. Can you upgrade it? Anti... Uh, Diluvian chisel. Okay. And um, what can I purchase from you? Like you, I serve. Catalyst. Pearl and orb of umbral magic. Summon several stationary orbs that'll explode upon contact. Can be traded with Molu. How do I trade them? I have a bunch of those. I. I have a fallen warrior used to unveil further opportunities for vengeance. Vestige Moth. Can buy vestige seeds from him. Can get some vigor items, add wither damage to a weapon. Now, how do I trade you my umbral scouring? Do I just do I just sell them to you? I can sell anything to you. I want to trade those. The lamp must be born. Only then can the. Hmm. Can be traded with Molu. This is Molu. I'm guessing there's an option that pops up later that involves trading them, because it doesn't make sense that he he doesn't even care that I have him. He's just like, ah, the, the stuff, do stuff, things. And in the Umber world, I can run down this way. Nope, does not open from this side. 
So I'm guessing these are a bunch of different shortcuts that'll just bring me back to the hub as I continue to play the game. There was that other door that was like, requires a, a key to the passage. So, um, hmm. well, either way, let's rest and wrap things up. The boss is down. We've found our hub. Seems like a pretty natural break spot. So y'all stay tuned. I'll catch y'all soon as we continue.